What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Crime Page, but Botany doesn't. This is Tony. Today we're talking about Texas leafcutter ants. Added taxon, one of 240 species of ant that farm mushrooms, okay? This is an evolutionary relationship that's evolved over 50 million freaking years, okay? It's fascinating as hell. A lot of people hate these things. They don't understand them. Ooh, I gotta spray them. You know, they, they freak me out. They're defoliating my plants. Sure, they might defoliate your plants for a little bit, all right, but eventually they stop, and you gotta, you gotta give it to them. They are farming mushrooms. These are ants that have evolved to farm mushrooms. They farm fungus. They are taking dead as well as living plant material back to their nest where they've got this extensive underground series of tunnels built where they got the fungus with them. In this case, it's Leuco agaricus gongoliferus is the species, all right? Basidiomycete fungus. It's, you know, somewhat related to the same, you know, little stalk and button mushrooms you buy at a, at a grocery store. This is fascinating. A lot of people hate these things. I love them. I love plants. They defoliate plants. Sure, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass for a, for a little bit, but they chill out after a while and then they just eat their, uh, they're just eating, eating their mushrooms down there. So you got to give it to them. Really cool fucking evolutionary relationships evolved. Let's check them out. Look at that, you adorable little bastards. Look at that. They're, they're carrying leaves of, the, of one of the legumes. All right, my tepawahe. Wonderful native plant down here in South Texas. Lucana pulverolenta. I really like that. Uh, there's a flower of uh, that red thing that's a withered flower, either from uh, Leucophyllum frutescens or Salvia coccinea. The red sage, the scarlet red sage, they really like those. After the flowers are done, they fall off, they dehiss, and these things bring them back to their underground layer. Back in there, under this Trixus inula, a really cool native member of Asteraceae. Great cover plant in the region. It can take, it can take that brutal sun, does fine as long as you water it. You know, you need some of these cover plants, like like this Trixus right here. It's a mutisioid composite. Here's the Leucophyllum, aka Texas sage. No relation to sage. Actually, it's in the same order, but anyway, both great cover plants, and you can grow all the cool uh, cacti and stuff beneath them, like this Echinocereus and this uh, Mammillaria. Uh, I believe that, uh, is this, uh, oh, that's Spherica, Mammillaria Spherica. But, uh, you know, see what they're doing? They're, they're, their home is in there, their little home is in there. You see them little bastards? Look, they got a nice little hole in the ground. They're bringing those leaf bits in there. They're going to feed them to the fungus and then they eat the fungus. All right. This species, Atatexana, the Texas leaf cutter, only lives in Texas, northeast from Mexico, and parts of Louisiana. I feel so privileged to have them in my yard. Look at that little bastard. Look at him. Look at his little ass. Look at how he walks. He's carrying a little piece of a leaf. Fucking hilarious. What are you doing? Where are you going? Hey, you know what? You didn't even say thank you. All right, I planted that goddamn tepawahe, now you're taking the leaves. I don't mind, but I'd like a little, I'd like some order of gratitude, you know. Why don't you go for some of the invasives I'm putting, you know. Like this, uh, well, this isn't invasive, this is just an aggressive native, but this is uh, that the Solanum eleagnifolia. Real pain in the ass. It's got a tuber, same genus as potatoes, but it's, uh, you know, it's coming up through my crushed granite. See that? Look, look at this guy, what do you got? He got a little, he, look at that, what do you got? What do you got over there? You get a little piece of a salvia flower. The Corolla, look at him, look at his little hustle. He's like one of those little dogs, you know? One of those little fucking schnauzers, you know, walking down a Paris street, you know, so fast. Give me that back. You're just kidding, you don't need it. Oh, look, what's he got? He's got a piece of a grain. No, that looks like a pedestal of some fruit. Where'd you get that? What is that? It's always fun to identify where these flowers are coming from. Oh, I think that's from, uh... wait, what is that from? What was that? Was that a Lyceum? I think that's a Lyceum. See, I got this native Lyceum. Genus of goji berry, Solanaceae. Look, it's hard to be mad at them, you know? They haven't, they defoliated my damn Hotropha cathartica, but it's got a caudex, you know, it's got a big storage tuber, so it'll come back. It's a storage tuber just like uh, that Solanum's got. But it's finally cooled off, you know, it's only getting the highs of 90 degrees down here. It's not, uh, it's not 105 anymore. Is that a heliotropium? Are you, you taking my heliotropium too? You taking that leaf? This fungus must, how does it break down fresh plant tissue? You know, it must have some really, you know, s strong enzymes, this fungus, to break all this stuff down. Look at it, they're defoliating my tepawahe. Lucana pulverolenta, look at it, wise ass. You know, you're lucky I like you. Oh, some people really don't like these things. They're not that bad, though, you know? I guess if you're trying to grow a citrus farm or some shit, maybe they are, but look at that. They're, defoli they're defoliating it. Look at this shit, <laughs> God. Look at that, That's, they brought all this stuff down here. They bring it down, they stash it down here, and then they're just gonna take it. Where are you gonna take it? Where are you taking it? God damn, apparently they like Lucana pulverolenta though. How do they know what the fungus likes? I guess they had 50 million years to figure it out. 
That is cool. Okay, guys. There you go. Look, they left a little trail too. Look at it. Some of these, these, some of these trails go 50 feet from the hole. See that they defoliated my hotropha. Do you see that? It's okay though. It's got a big storage route. It'll come back. But still, you know, I just a little bit. I wish I could, you would. I wish you would have asked. Look at it. Wish you would have asked. You got pieces of what is that? An abutilon? You taking an abutilon too? What is this? There they go. See that? Look. Look at these guys. Come here. What are you doing? Where are you, hey, where are you going with that? Come here. Come here, Marvin. Come here. Where are you go? Okay. Hey, I'm just kidding. You can have it. A beautiful on Zanti from Baja, California, sir. Brought the seed back 10 years ago now, I think. But most members of Malvasi are self-fertile. So I only brought, I only got like one, one or two to germinate. But I got, been having plenty of seed growing it and spreading it around. They get about 15 feet tall. A 15 foot tall a beautiful on. Look at that. Anyway, I don't know how they got here. They might have come in on mulch I got. Okay, but the queens do. Remember, the ants do the whole nuptial flight thing. All right, so they take off, you know. They end up getting wings, and they take off and establish new colonies. You know, the, the males mate with them in flight, and uh, bang, and, uh, and then the males die, and then the ants. So anyway, I, I think it's telling that I found a whole bunch of, this may or may not be connected. I don't even know if this is at a taxana, but I found a bunch of these ants suddenly in this hummingbird feeder that I put out. Had it out there for the last year. First time I seen wing dancing. It. Somebody's got wings. If I can get them, you know what? They're not. They don't want to move. There you go. I don't know where that. I don't know where the hell. You know, some of them had wings. Some of them. It looks like they're decomposed. They've been in there for about two weeks. But these guys popped up, and then a week later, I started seeing the Texas leaf cutters everywhere. So who knows? Pray tell. Maybe they came in on a mulch. Maybe it was the nuptial flight. You know, they can fly. That's how they establish new colonies. Either way, I'm happy to have them. You know, until they start really causing hell, uh, they can lurk. They can stay. Man, it's just like that. My yard became a goddamn classroom. I love it. All right. Understanding the ecology of the region, the ecology that's evolved here over millions of years, uh, just in your damn front yard. You say, now they're taking those abutilon buds. And I'm, I'm about 80 feet from their hole. So that's a long ass distance concerning these things are only about, I don't know, 10 millimeters long at most. Look at that. Those ants didn't want to mess with the black brush, though. <laughs> Probably got some toxic phytochemistry. But the Lucana, on the other hand, another species of Lucana, this is Lucana retusa, a golden ball lead tree. It should really get in West Texas, not South Texas, but it's a great native legume. You know, you need these legumes to provide cover because not a lot of stuff really likes being out in the, the full sun when it's 105 here in the summer. But they defoliated this. Oh, this should have tons of leaflets on it. They're all gone. Just defoliated. See, they left a couple right there. Kind of funny, you know, I'd, I'd be fucking annoyed if it went on for about six months. But, uh, you know, right now it's, it's pretty funny. But if it does keep going on, I might have to dig into that little nest, start pulling her fungus out. Anyway, so somewhere in there is the fungus, the mutualistic fungus Leuco agaricus gongolophorus. It is a basidiomycete, so it's a typical stalk and cap mushroom, though, of course, stalk and cap are not the uh, measures by which something is considered a basidiomycete. It's actually how the spores are produced. All that aside, this mushroom rarely ever fruits. It can get about 16 centimeters in diameter. So, you know, if that's if that's about seven centimeters right there, you can guess uh, how big that cap would be on the mushroom that it actually produces, you know, but that only happens when the uh, ants abandon the nest. All right, because, you know, all the little pins that form, uh, they don't, uh, the ants just get them. You know, they don't give it a chance they don't give Luco agaricus a chance to fruit. So, look at that, look at that. Now they're building, now they're moving little soil particles, so they're building this up. You know, I'm tolerant to these guys. If they keep, you know, defoliating, depends how long it goes. It goes on for, you know, a year, I'm going to have to remove them. But uh, I got a high, high tolerance right now. But I, I did see that they stopped bringing leaves and stuff. They're mostly bringing, they're mostly just moving little soil particles around, excavating it and what the shit. All right, that's it. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks, you guys. A little appreciation would be in order. Why don't you take out some of the invasives, huh? Could at least do that, too. Go for some of that solanum. What's it? It's an aggressive. All right, maybe some of the guinea grass, too. You guys eat guinea grass. That's a bad invasive. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.